cultivating acceptance is an art because it is not natural or easy for most of us to accept a situation, accept a feeling or accept who you are. And in this video, I'm going to dive deep into the reason why you are refusing to accept who you are, your situation, uncomfortable feelings, whatever it may be that you are actually resisting and how acceptance will transform your life and aid your healing journey. So let's dive straight in. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina and I help empower people on their spiritual and healing journey to live a more purposeful and fulfilling life. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it's my mission to support people just like you and to spread my message to as many people as possible. So don't forget, hit the bell notification as well so then you're notified of when I post a video because I post a video every single day. So let's get in. So firstly, we have to understand why do we choose not to accept? And the reason why this is is because we are trying to resist what is. And the what is, is your current situation, your current reality, where you are in life maybe. Maybe you don't want to be at your shitty job right now, or maybe it's resisting that, or it's not, ex or not accepting how you are feeling right now and experiencing uncomfortable emotions and so you're pushing them away or you're not accepting who you are as a person you don't accept yourself as a divine being you don't accept all those fragmented parts of yourself so you struggle with self-love and we are always resisting what we do not want to accept because it might mean that we are weak. It might mean that we are never going to get to the outcome that our ego is attached to because the opposite of the acceptance is the resistance. And the more we resist what is going on, the more pain we cause ourselves, the more suffering. So the, resist the resistance is just creating more discomfort. And what it is, is the ego trying to attach to a particular outcome, particular story, our particular um, identity that you're holding on to. And the ego is telling you, well, you need to control this situation, what's going on, in order to have a particular outcome and so when it isn't going that way, you create resistance. You do not accept what is going on right now, or you do not accept that uncomfortable feeling because the ego is saying this is a icky feeling. So you create that resistance because you don't want to accept that that um, situation isn't where the ego wanted. You're so in your ego, and this is not an attack, this is for me as well, we can become so in our ego, we choose not to set accept. And I find that most people think of acceptance as just giving in, let go, and loads of people say to you, oh, will you just let it go? Just, will you get over yourself, let it go? And the thing is, it's not that simple. When we think of just surrendering and letting go, it sounds difficult. And it's only when we choose to accept the situation we are feeling or going through, then we finally are able to surrender. And that's when the letting go process happens. And a part of that is allowing feelings and uncomfortable situations to be there without resisting it. Because the resistance is just your ego. The resistance is your ego saying, well, this is not right. You've got to change. You've got to control and not accept your current situation or accept who you are. So when you begin to choose acceptance, 
it all falls in place. You begin to surrender to what is, and then you're able to let go. Me, personally, yes, I can be a little bit of a controller. Um, I do analyze a lot, but for me personally, because of my own childhood, it was very unpredictable, my childhood. My father was a drug addict. My mum was emotionally unavailable. She could not regulate her own emotions. She was in and out of mental health hospitals. And my dad was completely absent in my life. And it was a messy divorce, traveling 200 miles, because my dad lived up north and we moved away down towards my mother's family. So this created unpredictability for me. It created a lot of unease. So how this played out in my adult life is that I tried to control outcome in order to feel safe. I want my external environment to tell me that I am safe. I want control, I want order, I want predictability. And the ego just loves that because it's safety. It knows what's coming up. It knows what's going to happen next. And so whenever I find myself in a situation where it isn't going my way, the way my ego had planned, because I've been in that situation so many times where it hasn't met my expectation. And then I kick off like a little two-year-old. And I've done so much inner work with this. I'm not like this that much anymore. And it's since becoming a mother that's really helped me to see these behavior traits, these patterns and these loops I get myself caught up in. And I used to really resist when things weren't going my way, when my son was a baby. And I used to really resist when things weren't going my way, when my son used to nap. So what would happen is if my son just wasn't tired or he wouldn't go to sleep at the times I wanted to, I would get so worked up and I'd be like, you will go to sleep. <laughs> I would get really worked up and try and try and try for like an hour to get him to nap or go to bed at night because I wanted him to go to sleep because I knew that's what's got to happen. And then I could have my downtime because every parent wants their downtime. But I was resisting the fact that he just wasn't tired, that he wasn't going to go to sleep. And looking back now, I would have just gave in and kept him up that little bit longer. And I did come to that conclusion in the end, I had this sudden realization I just kind of surrendered and stopped resisting the fact that he wasn't going to go to sleep and resisting that it isn't going to go my way. So I just kept him up and took him back downstairs. I think this was actually a nap. And my resistance completely dissolved. My anger, my frustration, it completely dissolved and I was actually blown away by this. I think I actually did a story on my Instagram about it back then. That was probably like a year or so ago now. And then I realized the power of acceptance and letting go. I was like, whoa, this stuff actually does create inner peace. Because when we are resisting things, we are creating dis-ease. We are not at peace within ourselves. And so we are frustrated all the time. We are experiencing those heavier emotions. So we feel heavy. We feel down. We feel negative because the, we are holding this resistance and choosing not to accept. And when we choose that acceptance and we begin to feel like we are surrendering, we're able to bring in more inner peace. And when we have that, we're able to move forward in ways that feel lighter. We'll take, we will take that step and say, okay, I accept this. There's no point resisting this. This is who I am. This is what I'm experiencing. And then just feel that it's okay to not be attached to the outcome. 
and then you feel lighter, you feel more at peace, you realise that, why was I getting so worked up about whatever it was? Why was I resisting it so much? So the art of acceptance is about detaching from an outcome, an experience, a story that your uh, ego has told you about your feelings, your situation, whatever is going on in your life that you are experiencing. It's a story, it's an attachment. And so then we try to control situations, we try to control experiences, experiences and what's going on in our life rather than just letting it be and accepting what is because when we can begin to accept what is life flows much easier because we are feeling lighter and we're not fighting against something we're not pushing and resisting it all our energy is going into the resistance and not using our energy to do the inner work and do some action-based steps because then we can feel more at peace with what is going on in our lives. So when it comes to your healing, it's about stop resisting the feelings that are coming up. Stop resisting the uncomfortableness. I know it's hard, but when we stop resisting and then start accepting, well, I've been through this and this is how it's played in my life, but now I get to choose what I do with my life, how I begin to heal, instead of the ego just attaching to this past pain, this story, and confining yourself to a box and saying, this is who I am, this is what I've been through, I am a victim, and saying, well, I accept that I've been through this situation, but now I get to transform that by yeah, it's surrendering to that, that situation that I have been, and I get to choose at any moment a meaning to give that. And often we don't, we choose not to accept those parts of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that are wounded. We are pushing them away and that is the resistance that we create because maybe it it's painful. Often we are told that these feelings or these parts of us are not acceptable. And whether that's through society, through your own parents and told you, you can't do that, that is not acceptable. Or you pushed a part away of yourself because you were punished for that in childhood. And it's about accepting all those parts of yourself again and stop resisting the parts of yourself, even an angry self. We can become, become angry, and I think the more we resist our anger, the more angry we actually are. The more we try to stop ourselves from being triggered, stop ourselves from reacting, because we are resisting that, because that is not acceptable. We are just creating more pain and more things to get triggered about because we're holding it all in and we're like thinking, I can't get triggered. I can't like show that part of myself. I can't be angry. When all emotions are acceptable, there's no good, there's no bad. It's all human experience. And so we resist all these parts of ourselves because we deem them as not acceptable and it creates more pain, more suffering and it's about bringing it back into wholeness and then accepting yourself for who you are rather than some victim that the ego has attached to. So I hope this video has been really helpful. I highly recommend you watch this video next. This is a guided meditation where I take you to meet your inner child. You go into your subconscious and release and let go of any emotional past pain. You meet your inner child and you can cultivate more love and peace within. So with that being said, 
I'll see you in that video. Much love.